Hey guys, welcome to your reading class. So we're going to read Corpse of Corpse, pages 360 to 367, and complete workbook page 141. So this is day two. Make sure you have your materials. So before we start, we're going to kind of look at uh, a fencing champion, a 10-year-old national fencing champion, girl named Lola Pasek. I'll link the video to the playlist as well as in the description box. So Pause here and take a look at the video to see what it's like to, you know, be a 10 year old fencing champion because it's very similar to what we're going to be reading today about our main Patrick, Pat, our name, our main character, Patrick. Uh, if you remember, he is training to compete in a fencing competition. Yeah. So he's going to actually do that today. So we also got Robert, his rival who really relies on strength, right? And Patrick's dad. What do you remember about Patrick's dad? Pause here and kind of talk to me about what kind of person he is. Yes, so he is very kind. He used to be a fencing champion too, right? When he was younger. And then he got injured, unfortunately, and he couldn't continue. And then we have Patrick's mother. What does she do in the last reading? that uh, or how does she try to help her son in the last reading yes so patrick's mom tries to help patrick practice by practicing with him at home very good and then do you remember patrick's teacher's name leblanc mr leblanc and how would you describe leblanc based on what we read last time he is yeah, he's a very skilled teacher. He cares a lot about his students. He cares about, you know, he's a very fair teacher as well. As you will see more about more of this today in today's reading. Now, what we're going to do today is I'm going to read out loud half of this, uh, half of today's reading. And then for the rest of the reading, I'd like for you to read alone either silently or I encourage you to read out loud because, you know, as we study at home, I imagine that you probably speak Korean at home. I might be wrong, but some most of you guys might be speaking Korean at home. So it's good to practice oral speaking in English. So I'd like to encourage you to try that as well. If you're already doing that, that's great. So before we read, we're going to pre-read. So I'd like you to take a pencil or highlighter and as we read kind of underline or circle some words that are unfamiliar to you like maybe some vocabulary words underline uh, yeah basically that and so we're doing until 367 so kind of scan the reading pause here and read all the read some of the headings look at the pictures and make a prediction on what you think today's reading is going to be about. So I'll do that too, so pause here. So I went ahead and underlined some words that might, that potentially could be vocabulary words for us as a class. But of course, your paper might look different from mine and that's totally okay. And as we read together, if you come across a word or phrase you don't understand, just circle it and highlight it, okay? And then we'll go back to them later. Champion at heart. The next day I went to class but I did not fence with Robert. Saturday, mom and I practiced for an hour while dad studied upstairs at his desk in their tiny bedroom. Again on Monday, we practiced. Tuesday night at class, I fenced with Robert and he fenced and he beat me five to one. You're tired, Mr. LeBlanc told me as he drove me home, but I see new things in your defense. You're practicing at home? Yes. Good, you'll improve. I doubted him that night. But then on Thursday, when I fenced with Robert, I began to feel more confident. I saw that when he struck at my blade, he would pull his hand up a little, barely an inch, but it was enough warning for me to drop my blade. Once when I did it, he missed it entirely, and I thrust at him. Twice he still struck my blade, but not where he intended to, not as strongly, and I kept him from gliding up and pressing. Yet I was not perfect. He scored three times on me, and I scored only once on him. I was still wearing myself out against his strength. The other boys congratulated me on holding him off so well. But next time, I thought, he'll be ready for my defenses. He'll know what to do to wear me out more quickly. 
I worked with each other every day. Sometimes dad came home and asked me to put on my gear. Then mom and I worked together in front of him with all the furniture pulled back except one tiny chair where he sat and directed us. For two weeks, Mr. LeBlanc kept Robert and me apart. The other boys I defeated easily enough because they never practiced in their spare time. At last, I again met Robert on the strip. He had not forgotten our last match, and he was not ignorant of my latest victory. He fenced carefully at first, and I began to think that he had been polishing his style. But then, when I lunged at him, he suddenly drove his foil straight into me. The red button drilled into my chest as I met it full force, unable to stop myself. I gasped, and I saw the foil bend and then snap in two and I was thrown back a pace on the strip. My own foil dropped to the ground and I clutched my right shoulder and chest. Leave the floor! Leave the floor! Mr. LeBlanc barked, looked up, thinking he was talking to me, but no. Red-faced, Robert was walking toward the dressing room, his eyes bitter. And not fooled Mr. LeBlanc. Help that boy up, Mr. LeBlanc said. Jack and Bruce pulled me up and helped me out of the fencing jacket. I could barely move my right arm. The other boys were arguing over whether Robert had done it purposely or not. Simultaneous attacks happen in fencing. And I had known of men to snap their foils in half while they were fencing. Yet I was sure that Robert had deliberately broken the rules and attacked me before defending himself, knowing that my attack had been declared first by my outthrust blade. Now, what happened here that caused Patrick to injure his right arm and chest? Pause here. Yep, Robert broke the rules and he, as you can see in the picture, he thrust the foil into his chest, injuring him. There was a black bruise with a red spot in the middle of my chest. It glistened as though it weren't a bruise at all, but a puddle of ink. Somebody had spilled on me. The sight turned my stomach. Mr. LeBlanc was in the dressing room, and I could hear him shouting. I sank down onto a bench against the wall. The other boys crowded around, curious and awed. Nobody had ever been hurt before in class. Mr. LeBlanc suspended Robert until the tournament. He dismissed the class early and drove me home. In the car, I saw that his hands were shaking as he gripped the wheel. Never, never, he kept murmuring. Never in my class. What possessed that boy? Never had this happened. Not with two Olympic trainees. Never before. Dad looked shocked when Mr. LeBlanc told him. With some difficulty, I showed him my bruise. Get into your pajamas, Patrick. Come down and I'll put something on it for you, Mom said. As I went upstairs, I heard Dad's voice. I'll not let him fence in the tournament, LeBlanc. Why did you not suspend that other boy from competing? What, and sh protect the champion? Should I add that insult to Patrick's injury? Mr. LeBlanc replied. Mom put hot compresses on the bruise. They will draw the blood and you will heal more quickly, she said. Let your right arm rest. Mr. LeBlanc looked at me gravely. Your father does not want you to compete next week, he said. Fencing is not sore fighting, Dad added. You don't have to be a swashbuckler, though that other boy is. You told me yourself that we win by style, not by brute strength, I replied. If that's true, then I can beat him. The boy is right, Mr. LeBlanc said. You know he's right, Julio. You have to grow yet, son, Dad said. You can fence Robert again later. It'll be worse than losing a match to him if I allow him to fight me away. He hesitated and nodded. I will not have you think of yourself as a coward. I will not forbid you to fence him if you think that your heart's ready for such a contest. A champion at heart can never be defeated. When a fencer has his courage, he's a champion, Mr. LeBlanc added. Patrick will yet defeat Robert. So what is the argument here between LeBlanc and Patrick and Patrick's father? What do they disagree about? Yes, so... LeBlanc and Patrick, they both think that Patrick should compete. But Patrick's dad says, you can fence Robert again later, saying he doesn't think that 
he's quite ready yet, especially because he's injured. Very good. I'm going to compete, I said, and Dan nodded gravely. As the days ran out, Mom made me build up more strength in my right arm. Sometimes in the evenings when Dad came home, he would let me arm wrestle with him. We were in dead earnest when we did it. He never budged his great muscular forearm, and I would push and push against it for 20 seconds at a time, never moving it, but building my own muscle against it. The 20 seconds of rest, and then I would start pushing again while he encouraged me or said nothing, only watching me steadily. So kind of like, just, you're not actually wrestling to see who would win, but he's just, so if this is a dad's arm, Patrick is just pushing against it to build the muscle. At last, the Saturday of the tournament came. We had steak for breakfast. Mom ate silently while Dad told me to relax and chew carefully. There was little conversation as we drove to the gym. I was already registered, so I went into the dressing rooms while they found seats. The pledge was over quickly. The salutes exchanged. Several schools had come to compete, so for several bouts, I didn't fence with anybody I knew. Mr. LeBlanc was beside himself with pride, and I was surprised at myself. It seemed so easy, ridiculously easy. Is this what I've been so nervous about? I thought. Again and again, I fenced, and again and again, I won. You're doing splendidly, Mom exclaimed during a break. Marie, Dad retorted. He looked at me. You win so easily. Son, because these are first eliminations. These are the boys who don't practice. It gets harder with the second eliminations. Do not get overconfident. So, pausing here, why does Patrick's dad tell him or warn him to not get overconfident? Like, don't be too confident. Why does he say that? Yeah, because this is the easy part. These are just first eliminations. The reason it feels so easy for Patrick right now is because he's just fencing with people who don't usually practice. So it's going to get harder. Good. He was right. As the judges filled in the double elimination chart and my name went lower and lower, the matches became harder. Fewer of us were competing and the judges conducted the matches one at a time. I opened the chart and saw that Robert was also undefeated, yet his huge size and unusual strength were coming to his aid. Perhaps he had even been practicing during his suspension. Mr. LeBlanc had been careful to keep us scheduled apart, perhaps hoping that somehow Robert would be eliminated by somebody else. But no, the clusters of names around him grew smaller and smaller, as did the cluster of names around mine. Several of the spectators strolled, or, strolled over to my parents and shook hands with my father. They looked at ease in the gym. Perhaps they were from the committee. They pulled up for a fold, they pulled up folding chairs <laughs> and sat by my parents while I fenced again. Again, I won, and the judges called a 10 minute recess and I checked the chart again. Robert and I were the only ones left. We would have to fence each other at least twice before we were because we were both undefeated. Give me your hand, Dad said. He pulled off my fencing glove and massaged the tendons and knuckles of my hand with hard, short rubs. Do not play this game, Patrick. Take the offensive. Use speed and style. You must rely on evasion. I've been watching him, and he's quite strong. The judges called my name, and I felt afraid. I slipped on the mask saluted Robert, and went to work. Dad had been right. When he took the offensive, he beat my blade or tried to glide on it, using his strength. I evaded him and quickly gained the lead on him by two points, but I was tired. At last, he thrust aside my foil long enough to score on me. Then I scored on him so that he had three points against him. Two more, I thought, and I would win. I thrust out and he quickly swept his foil up, catching my blade as it came in. Next thing I knew, he was almost on top of me, with our foils locked. I leaped back, and he scored on me. Somehow, when he came in again, we were locked in a corpse-a-corpse position. Time, he bore down on me with his foil, and I resisted with mine the best I could. But he was too strong. He was pushing me back, the handguard of his foil pushing on the handguard of mine, for our blades were crossed right at their bases. Okay, I'm gonna stop here for a second. I would like you to read the rest on your own. Again, you can read silently to yourself or you can read out loud, which I would like to encourage. And I'll talk to you in part two. In part two, we're going to define the vocabulary words that I underlined and work on page 141. So make sure to look at part two only after you finish the story, okay? Talk to you soon.